You see that? Yeah, I see it. Somebody's signaling. Cavalry uses polished steel. I you use mirrors. Well, if it's a cavalry, it looks like they just ride down here and check on us, don't it? I think we'd better change plans. Cordus Corner is only about four or five hours' ride from here. It's out of our way, but they got a telegraph wire. We can find out if anything's going on. from home. A long way. Three dead. An old man, a woman, a little boy. Three graves to dig, Paul. We got five graves to dig. Two more in there, shot and scalped. I'll be able to find some shovels in the hardware store, and some blankets in the hotel. The graveyard's right down the street. The sooner we get started. I'll take a look. We'll all take a look. enough to get here. Did you heard us right in? I heard you. Why the wait? Some I who speak English pretty well. I didn't know who was out there. It took a while before one of you came into sight. How oh, well, the noise then? Why don't you just shout out to us? Mister, you spend four days without water. You haven't got much voice for shouting. Four days? Why, you busted this town just after first light four days ago. How come you're still here now? I was under the bunk. The blanket pulled down. 
There'll be some keys out there in that mess in the office. Telegraph said the war parties were headed this way. Most folks started folding up, getting ready to fight. Then the telegraph went dead. Cut wire, I guess. Everybody spooked. Most of them headed for the hills, hide there. Even the sheriff took off at the last minute. Tall man, gray hair, white shirt, black vest. Yeah. We found him in the stable, dead. Been cussing that man for four days. Well, I couldn't see what happened to the folks who stayed. But I could hear it. I'm beginning to think one of those braves is wearing those keys for a trophy or something. Yeah. Hey, there they are. Uh, I found something, too. Take a look at this. Uh, that, that could be enough where you'll make yourself sick. Something else I heard. Four days and nights in this sweat box. I heard water splashing in that fountain. If you want to drive somebody crazy, that's the way to do it. What'd you say your name was? I didn't say. Nobody asked. Oh, my name's Ben Cartwright. This is uh, Candy. My son's Joe Hoss. Candy, much obliged for the water. Drum some horses through a vine trip in Utah. Cut right. I've heard that name. You got a big spread up Virginia City way. I'm glad to hear you got horses. I was wondering what I was going to ride when you let me out. Hey, well, in the meantime, what about the name? You persistent cuss, ain't you? The name's Kelly, Mike Kelly. I got tossed in here for tearing up that saloon. You know, I must say, Mr. Kelly, you look wonderful for a man 72 years old. 72? Yeah, right here in the ledger. Mike Kelly, age 72, weight 130 pounds, charge common drunk. You gained a little weight, Mike. Yeah, for a man that hadn't had any food or water for four days, I'd say that's a pretty good trick. Well, maybe this makes a little more sense. Josh Tanner, age 30-some, weight 180. Charge first degree murder. Yeah. Too bad you found that book. Kind of put you in the middle, doesn't it, Mr. Cartwright? You uh, can't stay here. Can't leave you here to starve to death or die of thirst. We could use another drover. You take me along, you turn me over to the law when you get home? If you get home? Suppose I say no. He's a real hard nose, ain't he? When he has to be. You related? No, I work for him when there's nothing better to do. He's fair and honest. He won't ask you to do anything he wouldn't do himself. Honest, huh? The honest ones that get me in trouble. Well, like you said, it's your choice. That's a big country out there. It's Paiute country now. A man on foot wouldn't have a prayer.
Cartwright. You got yourself a hand. For starters, I'll take that shovel. No, no. no for starters, you'll get yourself something to eat. Four days without food, you're no good to us. Find yourself something to eat and then spill off Joe up there. I'll get some grub and eat up there. This headstone might interest you. Murder. In Coulter Corners, that's what they call it when a Coulter gets shot. Even if it's a fair fight, and he draws first. About a month's pay, the Paiutes didn't leave one gun, let alone two. They're holdout guns, in case of trouble in the saloon. Old Pete kept them on a shelf up under the bar. The Paiutes were so busy grabbing whiskey, they didn't think to look. So how come you remember they were there? The last time I saw this scatter gun, it was aimed at my head. Field glasses, compass, and calf. That colonel must have kept one of everything in the army, I reckon. Well, add uh, 20 buttons to that list. Yes, sir. Hey, make it out. All this stuff's ready to go, Joe. Good enough. Fair and honest, huh? Looks to me like they're cleaning house. We got a saddle, a bridle, and a blanket, and these saddlebags from the livery stable. Come on. Tanner got a shotgun, a 45, and a bottle of whiskey at us alone. Better end that, fellas. Fetch an IOU, I got 12 shotgun shells and half a box of 45s. Well, as soon as we finish here, we'll ride out, huh? Fair and honest. And a waste. Everything in this town is owned by somebody out in that graveyard. Take care of you. You're safe now. Didn't know I'd be needing this so quick. I saw her around town for the last month or so. I think she was passing through from somewhere back east. Mr. Cartwright, unless you don't mind leaving her behind, I guess we won't be riding out. And within two hours, everyone... The whole town was running for their lives. They were loading up wagons, buggies. Everyone had a different idea of which direction to go. I don't have any family here. I have a horse. But Mr. Staley was kind enough to take me in his buckboard. He thought we could make it to Lathrop. Only an, an hour or so from town, near Rocky Point. Miss Burns, you, you don't have to talk about it. No, I, I want to. Somebody has to know. 
Suddenly, out of, out of nowhere, we saw three of them. Mr. Staley told me to get off the wagon and hide in the rocks. He almost pushed me off. And then he whipped the horses into a run so the Indians would follow him. And he made it over the ridge, and they galloped after him. Quite a man. Later. Later, the, the Paiutes rode past where, where I was hiding, and I heard them. I heard them laughing and yelling. And one of them was Carrie. <laughs> Mrs. Burns. It... You're right. I'm Josh Tanner, the man they said killed Billy Coulter. Cartwrights know they found me in the jail. Everything all right out there? So far, Candy sent me in to rustle up something for supper. You'll find plenty to grab over there. Mrs. Burns, we found these in the general store. You're going to need them. I know I'm delaying you. Mrs. Burns, the pirates have come and taken whatever it was they wanted and they've gone. We're just about as safe here as any place. Till tomorrow, maybe. Are you going to get yourself a good rest tonight? And we'll all be ready to ride out early in the morning. Tanner, I'll relieve you at sunset. Hey. Miss Burns. What do you know about that man? Just what I heard, that he shot the culture boy, Bill. That's all I know. I've only been here for three weeks. I've been waiting for my husband to send me stagecoach fare from Virginia City. We're from Ohio, Mr. Cartwright. Paul couldn't make a go of it, and he's trying to work something out in the silver mines. You know, we're from Virginia City. Yes, your, your son Joseph told me. You never should have left, and I never should have started out. No. Sorry. I guess that's not the right thing to say. It's just that I don't feel I'll ever be a pioneer woman. And I hate to admit it. I'm afraid. Ma'am, let me tell you something. You women call it being afraid. We men call it being cautious. It's just about the same thing. I think these horses would feel a lot better if we let them run free. Yeah, man, they would at that, but Paul wants some lead, that's the way it's gonna be. Now he's the boss, they're his horses. They're good stallions, fine as I ever saw. You know, if the Paiute knew there were animals like this around, they'd come howling over that hill 150 strong. You seem to know them pretty well. I had a little horse ranch of my own till they came howling out of the sunrise one morning. You all right, ma'am? You need some water or anything? No, I'm, I'm fine, thanks. We better get a move. Come on, come on. Get up.
Any more around like that one? Bite. I didn't get a chance to look. I think it was just a scout. Well, there's another one. Right up there. Lots of fires. Only four. I was beginning to think you were inviting a Paiute to supper. What changed your mind? The way you lit the fires after sunset. When it's too dark to see the smoke and still too light to see the flames. It's a smart trick. How are the stallions? Well, they're bedded down, resting easy. I see what you got in mind. If the Paiute come onto our track, they'll think we're a column of cavalry. They find this camp with four cold fires, bits and pieces of soldiers' gear sticking out of the grass. They'll be sure of it. I hope so. You may find out pretty quick. Hoss told me he thought he saw a flash just before sunset, north of us this time. Sleeping. Virginia City. Your husband is there, waiting. I don't care. If I never show up, Paul will think it was the Indians. Either we make it to Virginia City or we don't make it anywhere. But we could leave them somewhere along the way. I've got Cartwright pegged. He has an obligation to turn me in, and he will. But you didn't kill Billy Coulter. He drew first. He walked into my room with a gun in his hand. But who knows that? Except you and me. Then I've got to tell them. I told you to keep quiet at the inquest, and you did. Going to have to do the same thing now. But I can't, Josh. They'll hang you. What about you? Your whole life will be ruined. Oh. My life is ruined if I'm not with you. You never knew Paul, Josh. But it was over before I met you. He's a fine man. And I admire him. But I don't love him. Don't say it. Just keep quiet. Promise. A liar's promise. A lady's promise. I promise. Anything? No. Couldn't sleep nerves, I suppose. I was just telling Mrs. Burns how the Paiute, in fact, most Indians, won't raid at night. 
Yes, I've heard that. But I don't think I believe it. No, it's, it's true, all right. It's a part of the religion. They believe that if a, if a warrior is killed during the night, his spirit is lost and wanders forever looking for his happy hunting ground. Well, I think you ought to try to sleep, Mrs. Burns. Yes, I will. Thank you. to keep up, but I'm so tired. Can't we rest for a little? Not if you want to keep that pretty hair of yours. We've got to keep moving. Here we go. like that, huh? You just let him grab her and ride off. Didn't even go after her. Well, that figures. You had to save your expensive stallions. You got a good-sized gash in the back of your head. Cleaned it best I could. Thank you for that. The guns on the ground right behind you. Thanks, Jad. There we got them all. He drops them. Well, that Mrs. Burns. She rode with us. She was sick, scared. She never whimpered. If you're not interested, I'm going after her. Tanner, I'll go with you. Now, what he's going anyway. Even if you were lucky enough to catch up with him before they got to the main camp, he'd still kill her before he could do a thing about it. You know the Paiute card, right? You know what they'll do to her. Yes. And when they're through with her, they'll sell her to the Comancheros. Look, you don't own me. I'm going after her. You stay right where you are. You don't need me. One man more or less won't make any difference. You listen to me. You listen good. The Paiute aren't going to do anything till they boast and brag and work themselves up to it. And there's one place they're not going to be looking for us. And that's right in their own camp. All going? Yeah, all of us.
Edge of the lake here. Got a rope corral right in here. Teepees set in here. And when we were in luck, it's not the main camp, just a raiding party. Can't be more than 0, 25, 30 Indians. I noticed a guard in front of this end teepee. I figure that's where they got Mrs. Burns. Well, head on attack won't work. Mrs. Burns will be the first one killed. Paul, those Paiute mares in that corral. If they could see or smell our stallions, they'd run with them, if they could get out of that corral. It's a pretty solid rope corral. Somebody have to get in there and cut it. The wind's toward the lake. We could time it right to the minute. Is there any ground cover there at all? Yeah, yeah, there's some here. You'd have to stay pretty low. You're thinking of that guarded teepee. That's my job. I lost the lady. I'll get her back. It's a two-man job. You can't do it yourself. My kind of work. All right, that's yours. Joe, the crown's your job. Right, Paul. Horse in the timber. The saddle horses. Now, I'll bring three stallions right down here.
Huh? It'll only take a minute or two to see about this axle. If you uh, want to go see the sheriff, he's right over there. I'm in no big hurry. Thought you might want to walk in by yourself. I'm going to tell him everything that happened. Mary, maybe that'll help me, and maybe it won't. But sure as shooting, it'll ruin your life. I don't care what people say about me. I care, especially when the things they say are ugly. And women only whisper them. I don't want that to happen to you. The worst that can happen to me is I'll do time in prison. And I'll survive. I'm not sure I will. Yes, you will. You're married. Any man you'd marry, you've got to be quite a guy. You know what? He's checking every stage and rider coming in, asking about you. You're just making it worse. Mary, look at me. You were stuck in Coulter Corners, alone and scared, fighting off Billy Coulter when I rode in. What happened then has happened before. People get over it. Ready? I got no choice. The law was holding you, then it's Yes, clear. you do, Sheriff. It wasn't murder. It was self-defense. Sheriff, this lady's trying to help me because she thinks she owes me something. She's going to tell you that she saw the shooting, that she didn't. She wasn't even in Coulter Corners. Thanks for the try, Mrs. Burns. Coulter Corners. That's Lexington County, isn't it? That's right. A week. After you and the boys left, the governor sent Judge Spear. Look into things. A lot of talk at old Colonel Colder and played fast and loose with the law. The judge had to come back, count the rates. Uh-huh. Hear that, Tanner? Yes, I did. God, you're safe. We're together. You're a very lucky woman, Mrs. Burns. These are the two men that saved my life. Mr. Cartwright, this is my husband. Mr. Cartwright, how can I thank you? No need. Mr. Tanner. Mr. Tanner, I'm very grateful. And the sheriff, I know. I'm afraid I've been a nuisance every day asking about you. Worked out fine. How can I ever thank you? You've seen all the thanks I need. We're all thankful. Mr. Tanner. Thank you for everything. Goodbye, Mrs. Byrne. Thank you. Oh, 
all I could do, dear, was hope. It sounded so horrible. What wonderful men to bring you through. Yes, you'd have liked them. They were fine men. Mr. Tanner, you're not going to be in here very long. When you get out, how about signing on with us at the Ponderosa? Thanks. I'd best move along. Deputy, if I've got a choice, give me the cell with the best bed. I can use it. Thanks, boys. We'll do it. Good, Paul. I'll be back in about ten days. Unless McCall has to have an answer to that timber from back east. Yeah, well, don't, don't rush. Take it easy. We'll take care of the place. And, uh, fellas, Harriet Guthrie's doing us a real big favor taking over from Hop Singh while he's visiting his cousin. So, uh, be nice to him. Paul, we will. Yes. You just enjoy yourself in San Francisco. Oh, listen, I almost forgot. What about the line shacks? They gotta be ready for the spring roundup. But, Pa, I'm gonna ride out there as soon as you manage to leave. You know, but I got an idea, Pa, that when you get back here, the Ponderosa is still going to be here. Oh, well, what are you waiting for? That stage isn't going to be waiting for me all day. Have a good trip. Bye. Right. right. Take it easy, Pa.
Come here, give me a hand. It's hurt bad. Who is it? His name's Buckler. Used to work for us three, four years ago. I found him at Line Shack number four. Go on in town, get the sheriff and the doctor. Yeah. Me and a couple others tried to hold up the Wells Fargo office at Red Hill. Got jumped by a couple of guards coming in the back door. Just did get away. <sighs> we didn't get a red cent. Serves you right. Reason I'm here, you cut rights always treated me fair when I worked for you. I figured you'd get me some help. I was going to make one big haul. And come on back for Kelly. Kelly? Yeah, it'd be Kelly Linkrum, Bob Linkrum's daughter. She used to be a girl, didn't she? Still is. Hey, you think you can hold something on your stomach? Thanks. I'll try. Mrs. Guthrie? Can we have some, uh, some hot soup? It's on the stove. Thank you. Let's try to get some rest now, Butler. Yeah, I'll get it. Back up. Look at here, boys. There's our good old buddy, Buckley. <laughs> you know, he don't look any too happy to see his old friends. you say this one here costs, Carew? Hey, mighty fancy. Hundred, maybe, huh? Hundred? Your ignorance is showing, Carew. That's chicken feed. I bet you it's closer to five. Maybe six hundred. What do you say here, big fella? About six hundred? Hey, I was talking to you, big fella. what he said, Carew? He said, I can have the rifle. <laughs> Look, fat mouth, I've already got the rifle. <laughs> oh, this big fella, he's, he's mad enough to tear me apart, isn't he? I'd be seven kinds of fool to untie him right now, wouldn't I? <laughs> Another one about me. Five minutes. Oh, we got ourselves a couple of rough ones for sure, don't we? Hey, Rusher. Ah. Uh -huh. You go get all the horses, put them in the barn, you feed them. Now, why me? That's, that's Webster's job. Yeah, but I told you to do it. Webster, he's out in the kitchen watching her cook. Now, get going. Cook. Now, I'm going to say something to you just once so you both listen good. I'm not playing any games here. But even if I was, we'd be playing according to my rules. And you two be real good, I might let you live. I might not. Remember, we're playing according to my rules. That's all the knives. Got any orders for the cook? Well, first off, lady, what's your name? Uh-huh. You're not gonna tell me. 
Well, we just have to give you a name. We're gonna call you Ugly. Now, we want coffee, Ugly. Sandwiches, Ugly, and plenty of both. If you think for one minute I'm gonna cook and carry and fetch for thieves and scum... You were saying? I'll do what I have to do. But my name is Harriet Guthrie. Coffee and sandwiches. You're tough. When people can't defend themselves, ain't you? Dibs or whatever your name is. You know, I hate a fat mouth worse than anything. Even snakes, I really do. I ought to shoot you right now. Hold it! Shoot him? No, no! Oh, shooting's way too quick. You let me think of something slow. Now, you sit down in that chair. All right, now, you hero, on your feet, move on down that fireplace. I don't want you too close to fat mouth here. Go on. All right, hold it. That's far enough. Now, sit down. Now, Carew, I seen a window upstairs when we rode in. Get on up there, keep a good lookout. When Russia gets back, I'll have him spell you. Yeah, but what about... You're not going to argue with me, too, are you? No, but what about them two? Them two here is my own special pets, Carew. I like them so much, I'm not going to leave them for anything. Now, go on. All right, Donnie boy. Now let's you and me get right down to it, hmm? Did you leave him alone? Can't you see he's hurt bad? Oh, I know he is. Can't you see how I'm crying? <laughs> All right, Buckler. Now, where is it? You were up to $60,000 when the shooting started. Now, it ain't on you. It ain't on your horse. Now, where did you hide it? I ain't got it. Well, then, where is it? I threw it away when I rode out of town. Mm -hmm. Now, if I was to tear this rag off of you, you'd probably scream out real loud, wouldn't you? Just might kill him, too. Then where would you be? Yeah, I already thought of that myself. There's two riders coming. Two riders out front. Hey, Dips. Yeah, I know. They see you. No, I was already on the porch when I heard them. What about the horses? They're all inside. All right, Russia, get upstairs, cover the front. Be ready if I call you. Webster, get that woman back in the kitchen. Gotcha. Now you will be your last. Now, you two heroes, Carew here is going to be standing right by the front door. Now, one sound. Just one sound. You're both going to get it. What the? Shut up, Sonny. Doctor's boy? No, Sonny. He's one of mine. Web sir, get some more rawhide thongs. <laughs> now you go on, sit back down there before I put you down with a bullet. You handle yourself pretty good, Sonny. Better get you tied up while Carew here is still in one piece. Webster, you get his guns. Tie him up.
lipstick. Get on out in the kitchen. Tell that cook to hurry up with the grub. How bad is he, Doc? Bad enough. This bullet should come out and come out soon. <clears throat> I'm not gonna operate here. You should have brought him to my office in Virginia City. Oh, I would have, Doc. Yes, I really would, but we had, we got real busy. Now, just a minute, I'm not through yet. Yes, you are, Doc. My friend and I, we gotta talk right now. All right, Buckler, you tell me where the money is, I'm gonna cut you in for half a share. It comes out of yours, Dibs, not mine. Shut up. All right, Buckler, where is it? You know where you can go, Dibs. Where's the sheriff? I thought you were going to get him. He was out of town. He's on his way. The sheriff? Sonny boy there is supposed to go and get the sheriff? Nah, you're lying. Well, Buckler wanted to turn himself in. Oh, yeah? Now, why would he want to do a thing like that? He's reforming, Dibs. Oh, uh, no, 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 not old Buckler. No, we've been on too many jobs together for him to do that. Now, you know how I got it figured? He is hurting real bad. He knows we're after him, so he hides the money. Then he gives these folks here a, a sad story about how he's seen the error of his ways and all. Now, why would a man do all that? He knows he can't get away from us. He knows that if he gives himself up, if he turns state's evidence, the most time that he's going to get is, is three or four years. Now, a man can do that kind of time just standing on one foot. Yeah. And when he gets paroled, yeah. There is that nice $60,000 stashed away, just waiting to be picked up. Now, isn't that right, Buckler, old buddy? Huh? No, uh, it don't make any difference. Not now. Oh, really? You were what the man said, the sheriff's on his way. No! Sonny, that was right the very first time. The sheriff is out of town. Leastways, that's the way that I'm playing it. Hey, Dibs! Somebody else riding up. Get back up to that window. Somebody here want to tell me who this one is? What about you, fat mouth? I left my crystal ball outside. I'll be happy to go out and check. seen me, Dibs. He was going for his gun. Now, we got no use for your services, Doc. That is, not unless you're a, an undertaker, too. Crew, you go on outside. Drag that body in the barn. Looks could kill, huh? Which one of you wants to be the first dead hero?
You never said nothing about not shooting if somebody seen me. I didn't say nothing about not sending up flares to tell everybody we was here either. You ought to kill him. Shot like that bring every hand on a Ponderosa right now. No, if anybody had been close enough to hear it, they'd have been here by now. That's lucky for you. Because if anybody had a road in here, I'd have shot you dead. Now get your gun, get upstairs. Come on! Now I'm right inside your heads. I'm reading every thought you got. You want to get me for that fella outside. You got no guns. Your hands are tied. There's four of us for three of you, but you're still figuring and you're hoping and you're itchy. You read us pretty good, Dibs. Webster, get that cook lady in the kitchen. I want that food. I want it right now. Hey, we're not going to have to get you, Dibs. Your stupidity will do that for us. It's getting dark. A lot of people know the doctor's out here. They're going to start wondering why he's not back. Yeah, because who ever heard of a doc staying out after dark with a sick man, huh? And what about the sheriff? How do you know Candy there didn't leave a message for one of his deputies? Oh, he did. Now, look at here, Donnie boy. You're carrying a bullet in your shoulder. Now, if it don't come out, all we're gonna lose is a couple of hours. But you're gonna lose it all. You're gonna lose everything you got. <laughs> you're wasting your breath, Dibs. Ain't worth nothing to you, dead. You want that money. And I'm gonna get it, too. Maybe we shoot you. Maybe we find it without you. How are you gonna do that? Well, Webster's a scout. He could backtrack your trail. Even if he was, it ain't enough time. There's still a posse out looking for you. Yeah, I ain't forgot that. All the way around and back. Even found some old sacks to throw over. Now look, Buckler. Now what made you think you could get away with it, huh? I mean, what'd you even try for? Ten or twelve thousand dollars? That that wasn't enough for you? Well, it sure took you long enough. Hey, Rusher! What do you want? I want you. Get out here in a double. Remember that fight you had last year with Buckler? It was over a woman, wasn't it? He was carrying a picture of a girl, and I laughed, and I asked him what saloon she worked in, and he hit me. I was right! You still carry your picture, don't you, Buckler? None of your business. Mr. Donald Buckler, care of the Rivers Hotel, Fort Lyons, Wyoming. We ain't been there in over a year. You mean he's still carrying that letter around with him? Well, here's the return address. Miss Kelly Linkram. Ponderosa Ranch, Nevada Territory. Linkram. Sure. That's the name of the girl that Donnie said was waiting for him in, in Nevada. You know, when he, when he hit it big, he was going to go back for her, remember? Well, he did hit it big, didn't he, huh? $60,000 of our money 
And she's right here on the Ponderosa Ranch. What'd you do, Buckler? Hide that money in her house? Huh? Hey, Dibs. Let me at him. I'll make him talk. No, no. The girl will do it. Now, I don't suppose either one of you are going to tell me where the girl lives? Now, Sonny Boy there, all he cares about is getting loose so he can try to be a hero. But the cook lady there... She don't want to be no hero now, do you? Let her alone, Dibs. You bet. Now, you like these Cartwrights and, and that Sonny fella, don't you? You wouldn't want anything to happen to them now, would you? You wouldn't dare do anything to them. I won't if you give us a hand. Do you know where this Kelly Linkram lives? Huh? Yes, you know where she lives. You're going to bring her here. You're not going to let her out of here alone, are you? Well, she'll go for help. She won't go anywhere she's not supposed to. She's not back here in half an hour with the girl. There's going to be a lot of sudden fatalities around here. Now, if you've got your feet set against corn, you're going to be number one. I think he means it, Miss Guthrie. Better do what he says. I'll get my bonnet. Mm -hmm. Webster, you go on with her. Stay outside just in case. All right, back upstairs, Rusher. Oh, it's dark. Nobody's gonna come. You go back upstairs. Now, hold it. Remember, half an hour. They can't make it a half an hour. Well, how long? 45 minutes in daylight. At least an hour now. All right, one hour. Now, it's five minutes of eight. That's five minutes of nine. But if you're not back in time... There's going to be an awful lot of empty chairs around the breakfast table. You just keep that in mind, huh? Come on. You know something, Donnie boy? I'm real anxious to see your girlfriend. I bet we get along just fine. Twenty-five minutes to go. Uh, uh, uh. That man's in pain. Well, that's the wages of sin, Doc. That man there, he robbed a Wells Fargo office. That's against the law. I should have a look at that wound. Well, you go right ahead, Doc. Nobody here's gonna stop you. Whole plate of sandwiches and I got only one. I'm starving. You wait till the cook gets back. Yeah, if she gets back. What do you mean, if? Miss Guthrie knows this country better than you know the inside of your hat. She could give Webster the slip with no trouble at all. Be a bad piece of luck for you if she does. That'd mean you only got 23 minutes to live. Oh. He's getting worse, ain't he, Doc? Yeah, and he'll continue to. Unless that bullet's removed. <laughs> Not that you care. Oh, but I do care, Doc. You see, I can't have him die until I find out where he hid the money. He is going to die, though, ain't he, Doc, if that bullet don't come out of there? Yeah. You can tell about how much time he's got left? Of course I can tell. Twenty minutes. Hey, somebody coming. Sam! No, it can't be. You're not this soon. Maybe it's another deputy. Or the sheriff himself. There's a back way out, Dibs. You better take it while you can. Just one rider. 
All right, on your feet. Come on, on your feet! Find out who it is. Who is it? It's me, Paulson. It's just one of our hands. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll open the door. You talk to him. It's up to you whether he rides away or gets carried away. Just you. Evening, Joe. Sorry to bother you, but uh, we're going to need fence poles first thing in the morning. All right, we'll start at the mill. You come all the way out here to bother me with that? Well, I have to know, so the hands... All right, fine, now you know. Don't come around here asking me stupid questions. I gotta shoot you right now. Don't you think I know what you were doing yelling at that cowboy? You better hope he's too dumb to figure out something was wrong. Come, get over there. Thirteen minutes. Any sign of them, Rusher? No, no sign. Now, wait a minute. Anything could have happened. Maybe no one's home at the girl's house. Maybe... Maybe they went on a moonlight hayride. What about that, Doc? But to shoot innocent people. Save your breath, Doc. Dibbs is the kind of man who shoots people in the back. Or ties them up and then shoots them. Just for that, you're gonna be first, Sonny. Dibbs, horses. He's there. This here's your girlfriend, huh? She's not bad. She's not bad at all. Donnie, it's you. Kelly. What happened to you? Hoss, Joe. What, what, who are these men? I came out with Harriet because, well, she said I should come and... Well, what's going on? What's Donnie Buckler doing here? Don't you know, Kelly? Weren't you expecting him to come for you? Well, no, I sure wasn't. Well, I hadn't even got a letter from him in over a year. I didn't even know where he was. Donnie, how'd you get hurt? Kelly. Now, you're doing real fine, miss. But you're just wasting your breath. You know he was coming back here. You were waiting for him. That's why we sent for you. You leave her out of this, Dibs. You let her alone. You see, Donnie boy here, he won't tell us where he hid the money. He's real close-mouthed. But I figure that he's going to open it up real wide when you tell him to. Tell him what? I don't know anything about any money. She's telling the truth, Dibs. Sure she is. Everybody here is telling the truth. Webster, get over here. Tie her up. Carew, get one of those kitchen knives. The sharpest one they got. The funny thing about pain, see, some can take a lot. Others, they just, they cave right on in. Now, you take me, 
I can't stand pain. Mm -mm. It's going to be very interesting to see how she holds up. Women are usually a lot braver than the men, though, when you come right down to it. Did you ever see a woman that was scalped by the Indians? <laughs> Did you? The ones that come out of it, they wear a handkerchief over their heads to cover it up. Now, I wonder how one of them would cover up knife scars all over her face. Don't touch me. Now, the rest of it, it's all up to you, Donnie boy. You just say the word. Is she worth $60,000 to you? Pretty girl like this, you don't want me to cut her up. You won't have the money, but you'll still have a nice, happy marriage. You just tell me where you hid that money, Donnie boy. That's all you have to do. Donnie, tell him he's got it all wrong. We never said anything about getting married. Well, we were friends, but well, that was a long time ago. Are you lying to me? No, Donnie will tell you it's the truth. I'm sorry you're hurt, Donnie, but tell him, please. I never said I'd wait for you, and I never promised to marry you. Please tell him. You tell me. We were never anything more than friends, honest. My pa said he was too wild. Didn't want him coming round. I am going to be married, but not to him. To Harmon Thomas. We go to all that trouble for nothing? What do we do now, Dibs? You heard her, there's nothing between her and Buckler. Let her go. You shut up! She's right, Dibs. I didn't know about Thomas. But everything else is true. Me and Harmon... Well, it's been almost a year now. This ain't over yet. Not by a long shot. Maybe he ain't gonna marry her. But he don't want to see her cut up either. This ain't nothing new to me. Did I ever tell you about Cynthia, Donnie boy? Huh? I kissed her goodbye when I was 19. I rode off to war. I was going to marry her the very first day that I got back. Eleven years ago was the last time I saw her. She's probably got herself six kids. Full of gray hair by now. But I still like to remember her just like she was. And that's the way you like to think of this little lady, huh, Donnie boy? That's why you carry her picture and her letter around in your pocket. Isn't that right, Buckler? Isn't that right, Buckler? Forget it, Dips. I made a mistake. You heard her. Cut her. Let her go. It's, it's all under me. I'm lying, don't you? Give me the letter and the picture.
You're no good to nobody, not even yourself. Here, you got a chance to do something right for a change. What good is it gonna do you if this girl there gets gets hurt or maybe even killed, huh? You ain't got her. Mister, you ain't ever gonna have her. But if you do the right thing, she'll never forget you for it. And deep down inside, she'll always have a good feeling for you. Ah, uh, you talk good enough to be a preacher, Debs. Now, Buckler, you got a chance to get out from under. Pay off everything and have some left for yourself. Keep her quiet, Carew. Any way you have to. Donnie! Donnie, please! Donnie! Donnie, please! Donnie! Donnie! Donnie, please! Stop it! You win, Dibs. Leave her alone. I'd be glad to. Now, where's the money? I go with you. And we split. That's all right with me. Carew, go saddle horses. No. Can't find a place in the dark. Gotta rest. Gotta get stronger before I can sit on a horse. You wouldn't want me keeling over before I showed you where the money's hid. Now, would you, Dibs? First light, then. Dibs, I think you better think about that again. He ain't getting no stronger. And if that bullet don't come out of there, he ain't gonna make it the first light. Why don't you keep out of this, fat mouth? Why don't you ask the doc? What about it, doc? He's telling you the truth. You take that bullet out. Can he ride come daylight? Wouldn't be wise. I don't care if it's wise or not. Can he do it? I expect so. Then you're going to operate, Doc. You're going to operate here and now. No table. No decent light. Only a few instruments. How can I? Doc. Man's life's at stake. As a doctor, I'm obligated to save his life. I can, though you can take him out and kill him. All right, I'll need some lamps and water. Webster, take the lady out in the kitchen, get some water. Miss Guthrie, get hot water, boiling hot. I've helped with more operations than you have. I need lamps, I said. Carew, get upstairs. Find some lamps. Out of my way, please. I'll need some room here. Told you to get those lamps. But I thought... Don't think, just get them. 
Russia, get on down here. Get him back in the chair. Webster, where's that water? Me, will you? Now, I got some oil in the kitchen. It'll help a little. I'll get it for you. And then, if nobody minds, I think I'll just sit down for a while. That might be a good idea, Miss Guthrie. Go on, Dibs. If someone will get me some more boiling water, I'll get on with the operation. Steers get on the trail, it'd be balled up an hour. Yeah, you know, if I was a cart, right? I'd think that was the sweetest sound there is. All that the mooing going on. Yeah. yeah. It's the sound of money, Hoss. Frankly, after a ride like that trail ride today, I'd just soon have a good soft bed. It's hard money anytime. <sighs> get it all squared away, little brother? Yeah, everything's fine. I got the night riders out. Kenny, you have to take over race at midnight up on the East Ridge. Huh? I'll be there. Hey, honestly, just passed the chuck wagon. I've seen he's got a nice pan of biscuits with your brand on them. Well, you'll just have to save them for breakfast. I'm cutting down like I get into sand dust. Oh, well, I know you're cutting down. That's why I said it was just one pan of biscuits. <laughs> Candy knows about this real fancy eating place at sand dust. Ain't that right, Candy? Oh, yeah, yeah, there's one, the golden something or other. Um, if it's still there, you'll be able to find it without me. Yeah, what do you mean without you? Where are you going to be? Well, I told Mr. Carwright, Sandus is the end of the line. You realize how much uh, money I have burning a hole in my pocket? I can get all the way to Chicago. You mean to tell me you're going to pass up a ride on a, on a hard saddle all the way back to the Ponderosa just to, just to sit in some soft train and, and sip those drinks the waiter brings you with the, the ice and all in them and look at the pretty girls who are going back east to have to spend all their time out west. Oh, so how come we never ran away from home? I don't know. But I can tell you that. <sighs> Both of you ought to quit the gabbing and get some shut eye. We got that creek across them stairs and more. If we don't get them in there to Mr. Haskell. Hey. Hey, nobody. Don't have any money. Burning nobody's pocket. You better be careful, you're gonna blow that fire out.
fine beef cattle. You didn't drive them too hard. When you get back to the Ponderosa, you tell Ben how pleased I am you brought your herd all the way here to sand dust. Well, he'll be happy to hear that. So I gotta be honest with you, Mr. Haskell, that's not the real reason we drove those cattle to sand dust, because you pay 50 cents a head more. <laughs> and they're worth it to me. I'll have your money ready any time you want to come by my office in town and pick it up. Good enough. We'll be through here pretty soon. All right. Be seeing you in town. Right. Sand dust. Rick men get a beer in a town name like that? <laughs> I'm buying. Three farewell beers. Candy, I never figured you're really serious. I don't want to uh, crowd you, but uh, as soon as I pick up my wages, I want to be leaving. Suit yourself. He's too good a hand to lose. I'll talk him out of it while we're having that beer. Well, uh, maybe so. Come on, let's get back to work. Personal, mister, just practice. No offense. Hi. How you doing? You'll want to check these figures, Joe. All right. Hey, here's a Hitler present from Pa. Oh, you don't say. <laughs> I got a present here for Ben. Uh, this is Valerie Townsend, Mr. Cartwright. Well. Hello, Mr. Cartwright. Very nice to meet you. Spanish Sherry. <laughs> And wouldn't you know? <laughs> Spanish, Sherry? You guessed right. Same label, same year. I'll get your money now. Right. Well, these figures look correct. Don't try anything and nobody will get hurt. Put them up and keep them there. Now back off. Back off! Open the safe, old man. Ah! Open the safe. I, I, I don't know where I stopped. Well, you better remember. Get out of here. You better hurry up, old timer. My brother Billy will cut you to bits. All right. My drovers are coming in here to get paid. They could show up any minute. You don't say. Now take a look out that there window. Sheriff is out of town. We took care of that. You better hope your men don't butt in, mister. What are you two doing here? I figured you'd be hunting down that cold beer about now. Well, we were, little brother, but uh, we didn't want to get too far ahead of you. Yeah, it'll only be a little while yet. Why don't you go on ahead? I'll catch up to you. Yeah. I talked old Candy into putting off that trip. Pretty good, huh? Yeah, it's real good news. Close the door. I'll see you later, huh? You stay right where you are. Not a sound from you. Out the back. Candy, take the other side. Back in the bar.
Here, get him out of here. Get up. Hey. You ain't gonna be here all very long, big man. Just killed Haskell. I had him in my sights, I should have squeezed. Heard some shots, what happened? A gang robbed Mr. Haskell. He killed him. That must have been all oh, seven or eight of them. You got just one? Two dead, behind the barn. Got a name, boy? His name's Billy. Heard him call another one, Doug. All right, put your guns away. If there's any more shooting, we'll do it. So I like a man who knows what he's doing. On your feet. On your feet. <clears throat> I want to see you all in my office. Take care of Hatch. Doc will be here in a few minutes. Where's your brother, Billy? Where do you hold up when you're in these parts? These folks were lucky. You ran into a bad bunch. Doug and Billy Slater. Wanted dead or alive in seven states. Okay, this is going to take a little bit of time. Might as well sit down. Who saw the Haskell killing? I did, sir, Mr. Townsend. You two didn't see it, huh? No, all we saw was Billy toss the money bag to his brother. Four witnesses to a robbery, two witnesses to a murder. Looked like there's going to be a rope waiting for Billy Boy. <laughs> Doug will get me out. There ain't no jail that'll hold me, and you know it. Mine will. Valerie, how much money they get out of that safe, do you know? I'm not sure. Uh, enough to buy three or four herds the size of Mr. Cartwright's. Should I lock him up? You won't convict me. There's not going to be enough witnesses alive to testify. None of you! Do you hear what I'm saying? You're all going to be dead! I hope you folks have no pressing business in the next few days. You're staying here. You caught me a killer. Catching him, that's... That's just half the battle. I need your testimony to get a conviction. Oh, fine. How long is this going to take, you figure? Well, I'll wire the circuit judge today. Two or three days to get here. Two or three days for the trial. Uh, unless, of course, he's in the middle of something right now. All right, Sheriff, three of us will be out at the trail camp if you need us. Mr. Cartwright, you weren't listening. I said this jail would hold Billy. It will. That means there's only one way that Doug can see that Billy cheats the noose. Get rid of the witnesses. That Slater gang will try to kill you. That's all they'll do. Try. As of now, your guests at the county. Protective custody in the hotel under guard. Valerie, you'll have to move out of the boarding house. Hello, O'Hara, Jim Snell, Walter Benson. I need him now. And I want you to listen to what I got to say. Ladies' bedrooms on the left, gentlemen's on the right. Thank you very much. Keep this door locked at all times. There'll be an armed deputy in the hall. If you need anything, say the word. Thank you. Well, I guess this will be it for the next few days. Yeah. They know Virginia City, is it? street down there be full of people before you know it. Coming in town to see the trial and the hanging. Uh, 
Let's get settled down. There are eyewitnesses, Doug. There isn't a lawyer in the world that can beat eyewitnesses. What about the jail? You know that bucket, Jack? Is she a tight one? Forget about the jail. It's built like a fort. We made a big haul this trip. You'll all get a big cut when you've earned it. When Billy is free. I don't care how you do it, Jack. But I want my brother free. Look, Doug, there were four witnesses. Four of them. Sure. What if two of them happened to get killed? Now, something tells me that the others wouldn't be very anxious to talk. <laughs> Come on. I didn't mean to be hysterical. I've read about robberies and murders. Everybody hears and reads about it, but... But when you're there... Mr. Haskell was so kind to me. He was such a nice man to everyone. Yes, he was, Val. He was a fine fellow. I've never even seen a murder trial. I've never been a witness. I probably won't know what to do at all. Have you ever been a witness? Oh, there's nothing to it. You just swear to tell the truth, and the prosecutor asks you a few questions, you answer them. That's it. Oh, I wish I could just go down those stairs and get on a train and go home. Val, uh, where is your home? I don't believe you said. Albany, New York, the state capital. You folks still live there? My mother. She's all the family I have now. There's not much opportunity for a girl to work in New York. Well, I thought I could do better out west. But if I'd known what it was going to be like, I never would have come. Oh, it's not really that bad. We've got some fine towns and some fine folks. Most of them wear guns. Almost everyone. What's so special about Albany? I imagine people get hurt in Albany. People probably even get murdered in Albany. Probably. But I don't have to see it. I didn't have to see the kindest man I'd ever known shot down in cold blood. What's the matter? What's going on? <sighs> Not a thing, little brother. Just talking. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to lose my temper. It's all right. You were a little rough on her, weren't you? Frankly, that was the idea. You wanted me to lose my temper? Why? I was trying to help. Well, I once knew an army doctor. He told me people will never get hysterical alone. They have to have an audience. The best cure is uh, to slap their face. And the next best thing is to tell them something that'll shock them. You're right. We're going to... We're going to be here for two days together before the trial. The last thing you want is an hysterical woman. Thank you, Candy. I'll try and do better. Val, you, uh, you said you were from Albany. What made you pick Sandust? I didn't exactly pick it. I was going to Virginia City, and this is where my money ran out. Virginia City, huh? Well, listen, when this is all over with, you'll have to make it all the way on out and pay us a little visit. I mean, we could rig up enough money to buy a stage ticket, don't you reckon, little brother? I think we can guarantee it. Mr. Haskell told me about the Ponderosa, but, but I'm not sure I can accept. Well, you'd be more than welcome, I assure you. Take my word for it, I wasn't even raised there. It's quite a layout. Who is it? Deputy Jensen. It's all right, sir. Coming on dinner time. Sheriff thought you folks might want to eat. Dinner. Your stomach must be three hours slow and mine's three hours fast. We'll be out in a minute. We'll be waiting. Tell me the truth. 
Do you think the Slater gang will try anything? Well, it's a rough gang. I don't think we're going to take any chances. Now I am scared. There's nothing wrong with that. Scared? Cautious? It's about the same thing. You're looking at three very cautious individuals. Shall we go? just down the street, the Clover Bee. All right, Short, lead off. Daylight, they all want you pretty bad. It cost them. Three of them came in, they left two behind. They killed short. Can you walk? Yeah, so I can be ahead. Get into the hotel. Rivers, take care of oh. short. All right, that goes for you, too. I want everybody at the hotel. Nobody leaves without my permission. Yeah. You know, they came from three different directions, Sheriff. A little better timing, and you'd be fresh out of witnesses. Well, I promise you one thing Billy Slater's going to stand trial, and you're going to be there to testify against him if I have to deputize every able-bodied man in this town. Sheriff, I hope you don't break that promise. Murder trial is a holiday for a lot of people. Are you sure Joe's going to be all right? Oh, yeah. I uh, saw the wound. He's hurting some now, but he'll be all right. The doctor and Hoss have been in there almost an hour. They're probably tying a pretty little bow on his bandages. I'm teaching Joe how to use that crutch. Any one of them down there could be of the Slater gang. You know something? You worry too much. Now you follow instructions exactly like I told you. That leg will heal a month sooner than if you put weight on it too soon. Yeah, don't worry, Doc. I will. Much obliged. Joe, do you feel all right? Oh, he's fine. It's more of a burn than a break. That bullet just barely grazed the bone. Now, Joe... Like I said, get lots of rest. And uh, no foot races. Don't worry about it, Doc. I'll keep him down. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, 
guess this isn't going to be too bad. Here I am, practically an invalid. Three people will wait on me, hand well, and foot. Take advantage of it, little brother. Once we get back to the Ponderosa, it's every man for himself. Yeah, I know. Hey, speaking of, when we get back to the Ponderosa, we made a decision. When we get back, you're going to be with us. And we're not going to take no for an answer. I'd like that. Thank you very much for the invitation. And for saving my life. I think that little trip will do a good after all seven. Donko. How's it feel? I'll live. We're all living. So far. I'm sorry about it. I'm real sorry. I just never expected anybody to hit in broad daylight. Not even Doug Slater. Oh, what we're talking about now, Sheriff, is what are we going to do about the next time? You do agree there will be a next time. I've deputized another half a dozen men. I've got a way to get you from here to the courthouse. If he wants to get you this time, he'll need an army. For a little while there, I thought he already had one. We'll be ready. How's Valerie holding up? Well, much better than expected, to be frank with you. Hmm. She'll be fine. Well, I got one piece of good news. I got a telegram from Judge Wheeler. He should be here by noon tomorrow. Does that mean we can get down to business or we're going to have a lot of lawyer palaver? Judge Wheeler doesn't waste time. That trial will start tomorrow. Any time, just hang on. We'll do that, Sheriff. Well, only 24 more hours. I might even beat this game. Yeah, why don't you deal us all in? I got a feeling it's going to be the longest 24 hours we've ever had. Well, you didn't mess it up. You could have done better. You know it. Any of those witnesses get a good look at you at Haskell's? Not a chance. One man, Doug. One gun. One's enough, if it's a good man holding it. Get moving. I get three whole shares. Three. <laughs> well, you got them. Move. I'll play these. What do you mean you'll play those? You're always playing a pat hand. Hold it. Stop right there. It's supper for witnesses. Well, we can see that. Take the tray. Turn around. All right, give it back. Hold it, hold it. Who's there? Jensen, your supper's here. He's clean, Mr. Cartwright. <sighs> Smells like fried chicken. That's what it is. Hot biscuits, too.
Loser dropped in. But I searched him. They had it on the tray. Get him out of here. Val, why don't you go on over to your room? Slater, bunch of really means business. I'll be glad when this is over. The trial hadn't even started yet. Let's go. Walk behind this lead wagon. Okay, let's move out. in the courtroom. You gents leave them all here. That's right. Judge Wheeler's orders. No sidearms except mine. Circuit Court's now in session. The Honorable Judge Horace Wheeler presiding. Be seated. At the first sign of any disturbance, I will order this courtroom cleared. If the prosecution is ready. Ready, Your Honor. So, Doug Slater dropped his brother. What happened then? Billy Slater ran back through the barn. I went into Mr. Haskell's office. When I got to the back door, I heard a shot. I kicked the door open, and I saw Billy Slater fire at Mr. Haskell again. Who else was in the office besides you, Slater, and Mr. Haskell? Miss Townsend. Just compose yourself, Miss Townsend. Take as much time as you like. I'm sorry. Forgive me. That's quite understandable. The loss of an old friend. But all we need to know is what you saw that afternoon. Well, I was surprised. I, I was frightened. Everything just... Miss Townsend, did you see Billy Slater come into the office where you were working? Yes. Did he have a gun in his hand? I, I don't know. I, I can't say.
After Billy Slater came in, did you see Mr. Haskell get shot? I don't know. Well, no, I didn't see him. I was so frightened, I, I kept my eyes closed. Did you see Billy Slater shoot Matt Haskell? No, I really didn't. Miss Townsend, you've told this court that you were present when Matt Haskell was killed. Well, yes, but... But I was so frightened that I didn't look. I heard the shots, but I didn't see anything. That's all, Miss Townsend. But if you do decide that the evidence here presented does prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant, Billy Slater, shot and killed Mr. Haskell, then you must return a verdict of guilty of murder. The jury will retire in the custody of the bailiff. This court is now in recess. It didn't scare you. No, it's all right. Couldn't sleep, huh? No. Uh, me neither. You know, I can't figure out about my brother Hoss. He sleep through anything. Once he gets to snoring, there's no way for anybody else to doze off. You know, I really didn't do very well when I was testifying this morning. No, you did fine. Everybody was nervous. No, but actually, I couldn't remember. I don't think I really saw anything. Well, it's all going to be over pretty soon, maybe tomorrow. Do you think so? I don't see any reason why not. You want to see him hang, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I saw him kill Mr. Haskell in cold blood, pump two shots in him. I want to see him hang. Nobody's thinking about Billy Slater. What did he think about Mr. Haskell? He was afraid. Mr. Haskell went for his gun. Well, it's funny you didn't think of those things at the trial. All any of you are thinking about is seeing him hang. Yeah, right now, that's what I think about Billy Slater. I think about that and the innocent people that have been killed. I think about his brother and where he is now and what he's going to do next. There was $40,000 in that safe. Enough to buy a poor man anything he wanted. Land, a roof over his head. You wouldn't know about that, would you? Your father owns the biggest ranch in Nevada. I'll bet you never wanted anything you didn't have. Well, everybody wants things they don't have, but they don't kill innocent people to get them. I'll bet you never had to fight for anything in your life. Everybody fights for the things they want. That was a big difference between fighting and killing. You don't know how lucky you are. Get away from the window. I told you to get away from the window. Now get down. You all right? I want you to stay down. What's going on? Open up. Shout through the window. You all right? Who is it? Jensen. Came from outside. Nobody heard. Check outside. They won't give up, will they? No. Doesn't make any difference whether they hit anybody or not. By tomorrow, every man on that jury is going to know what happened. They're going to start wondering whether they ought to find Billy Slater guilty or not. Circuit court's now in session. Judge Horace Wheeler presiding.
You may be seated. Has the jury reached a verdict? Yes, Your Honor. Return the juryman to the box. without being told the judge is a dead man and you sheriff with your hands up come in now take him off sheriff What you do to me or to anyone else here, you'll answer to the law for this. Shut up. Now, come on. On your feet, Cartwright, you're coming too. Don't try it, big man, or he gets it right here. Come on. You too, come on. Some people will get killed. All right, back off or I drop the judge. <laughs> What'd I tell you, Cartwright? I told your brother Doug would have me out of jail. Come on. They're just walking up the street. Better let them go. If you don't, they'll kill the hostages. a judge. <laughs> scared blue. Everybody in this town is scared to breathe. <laughs> you ain't scared, are you, Val? You just stick close to me, you won't get hurt. Didn't know she was my girl, did you, Cartwright? Didn't know she was in on the robbery. Signal us with a curtain from Haskell's window to tell us when to come into the store. That's why up in the room they didn't shoot at your shadow on the blind. Yeah, that's right, Cartwright. We took real good care of her. Come on. Let's get to the horses. There's got to be a back way out of here. Let's find it. Get limpy here, up on a horse. Cartwright, you're gonna pay for that bullet in my arm. Cover him, you're riding with me. Why'd you help him, Val? So you could have that ranch you were talking about for the two of you? Yes, because I know what it's like to want just a little of what others have. Hurry it up! Oh, you're never gonna have that ranch. Just more killing. Tell him, Billy, we're gonna have a ranch. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. <laughs> But you promised. Yeah. Yeah, I promise a lot of things. Like, uh, there wouldn't be any killing now. Come on! I'm not going. Not until you promise. Suit yourself. Billy! You're not going to hurt anyone ever again.
I'm sorry. Don't you worry. We'll get you a doctor. I'm scared. Please, hold my hand. By myself. Oh, I'm sure you can, but I ain't got nothing else to do. Well, Sheriff, thank you for the use of the mugboard. We'll see that you get it back. No hurry. Hey, you about ready to go? Me? I've been ready to go ever since we came into this town. We better get on the way. It's a long way home. It sure is, and a lot of folks don't get there. Thanks, Sheriff. That's right, man. Sure, sure. Haven't seen you in a couple of years. Yeah. Really? About that. Ben, this is Henry Trask, my top wrangler. Henry, Ben Cartwright. Trask? Heard about you, Cartwright. I understand you're a pretty big man in these parts. A lot bigger than you know, Henry. Big enough to have the army calling on him when they need horses? <laughs> Word sure gets around in these parts. Is that what brought you into town from the hills? Well, uh, unless you figure you got a monopoly. Oh, Frank, you know better than that. Army buys good horses wherever we can find them. And I've got some good ones. Oh, uh, I hear the brass is coming in on the noon stage. Is that right? You sure hear correctly, Frank. Yes, Major Dawson's coming in on the noon stage. He'll be staying with me if you want to see him. <laughs> oh, Ben, you don't miss a trick, do you? Oh, here she comes now, right on time. Ah! <laughs> Major, good to see you. Good to see you, Ben. It's my daughter, Dana. I wrote you she'd be coming with me. Well, it's a pleasure to see you. I hope your stay with us is very pleasant. Well, thank you, Mr. Cartwright. I'm looking forward to it. I'm Frank Cole, Major. I understand that you're here to buy some horses. I got some to sell. Well, Mr. Cole, I'm running rather a tight schedule. I hadn't planned on making two stops. Or perhaps next trip. I doubt that Ben wants to hog all the business. I don't reckon he'd mind if I brought my string out to his place to show you. I don't mind, Major. Of course not. Well, fine. I'll, I'll be looking at a stock in the morning. I'll be there. Better get along. Hopsing is holding lunch. I'm looking for you. I want my back pay. I earned it. I gave you orders to help Billings and Evers with the Ramuda. I told you I was quitting. I told you last night, but you didn't listen. Trask, he likes pretty things. Give him a $20 gold piece. Pick it up! Uh, 
What you wanted, you pay, you got it. Don't come weaseling back to me when you run out. There's no place in my outfit for a man who won't stand up and fight for his rights. He isn't much of a man, is he? Hop Singh, that was an excellent breakfast. My mess sergeant could take a few lessons from you. And so could I. That's nice of you to say that. Sometimes we take Hop Singh's cooking talents for granted. You like breakfast? You wait until you eat dinner. Mm. <laughs> he makes good coffee. Morning, Mr. Dawson. Major? Oh, I got all them horses round up. You want to show the Major they're down to South Corral, and I got the Surrey all ready to go. Oh, good. Thank you, Oss. Major, shall we have a look at those horses? That's what I'm here for. The sooner the better, Ben. I'd like to go, too, if I may. Sure, come along. Traveling with me, she's become quite an expert. Oh, she has, has she? Miss Dawson, have you also become as expert at bargaining as your father is? <laughs> he don't mean that, Miss Dawson. He's just Josh. Ain't nothing he <laughs> likes better than a good horse. <laughs> Let's go. Cartwright? Mr. Cartwright, could I talk to you a minute? Yes. You probably don't remember me, Mr. Cartwright. You saw me working horses once two years ago. Yes, I remember. You did a good job. I've seen you since then, though. I saw you yesterday in Virginia City, didn't I? I'm sorry I bothered you, sir. Wait a minute, now. You haven't told me what you wanted. You saw me in town yesterday. Huh? And you saw me eating crow. Don't rightly figure you'd be hiring a man that backs down like I did. Well, usually a man backs down as a reason for it. You saw it like it was, sir. I'm a bit short-handed. My, most of my men are off on a cattle drive with my youngest son. I could give you a trial. Mr. Cartwright, how about yesterday? Young fellow, I'm just interested in the way you handle horses. You want a job, you get down to the South Corral. Yes, sir. if we'd hold up a long patrol. Yeah, well, you, uh, you may be right, Major. I'll, uh, I'll see that he's sent back to the herd. Oh, well, now, wait a minute, Ben. There's uh, no use rushing things. Uh, I might consider him, if the price is right. Well, Major, you know, I've, uh, I've always considered you a very good judge of horse flesh, and uh, you sure know what you want. No, sir, I'd hate to see a... Sensitive horse like this overworked. I'll, uh, I'll see that he's withdrawn. I'll take him. Well, Major, I just might sell him to you, if the price is right. Oh. This new hand over here. Yeah. Think he can handle that sorrel? Yeah, I think so. What's his name? Mark. Mark? Yes, sir. That sorrel's new to the saddle. He's got a mind of his own. Watch him. I can handle him, sir. Take him. Yes, I thought you might like him, Major. 
Well, I sort of had my doubts about that young man, but he's good. Yeah. Maybe it's just because the sorrel isn't giving him any trouble. The way he's handling that horse, ma'am. Seemed to me like he could face up to trouble. Didn't face up to trouble yesterday. Good work, Mark. Cut him in with the rest. Major, we've got two fellas bringing another string from the river range. We can show those after lunch. You keep driving the same bargain, you'll bankrupt the army. <laughs> now, Major, don't worry. Paul won't take that uniform off before you get back to San Francisco. He might get some of them brass buttons, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's Frank Cole with his string horses. Let's see that one. Frank, I know Major Dawson here. Major, I can't entertain you to fine ranch like Ben's, but. My stock's just as good. I'd say they're drawn a little fine. Well, we've driven them down from the mountains. Had to push them a little hard to get them here. A little grain, they'll fill out. I'll start working them for you. No, Mr. Cole. We'd both be wasting our time. They're not up to my standards. I kind of thought that's the way things might be. Nobody gets army business but you. That right, Ben? Now, Frank, I know you've had a rough time driving these horses down so the Major could see them. I'll overlook that remark. Major? What about that black horse? Looks pretty good. Ben's right. I'd like to see him work. Well, we, uh, we only caught him a little while ago. He, he, he's not exactly full broke yet. That's all right. I'll consider that when I watch him work. All right, Trask, you heard the man. Golly, slap a saddle on this black horse. Hurry it up. What's he doing here? He's here because I hired him. Why? Does it trouble you, him being here? No, no skin off my teeth. He's ready, Frank. All right. Ooh, now. Whoop. Whoop. Ooh, now. Whoop. 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 Frank, this horse isn't ready, and you know it. All I know is you don't work for me no more. <laughs> Break you in two. All right, that'll be enough. Nobody uses a whip on an animal around here. That ain't the way I see it. I don't care how you see it. Don't use a whip on an animal on the Ponderosa.
you still interested in that stallion, Major? Not the way he is now. Well, suppose he was saddle-broke. Then the Army paid top dollar for him. But from the looks of him, you won't have time before I leave. You just let me worry about that. Let's go. His answer for everything. Man or animal, if it, if it don't knuckle under to him, he beats it until it does. Good evening. Good evening. Full moon tonight. Yes. Oh, it's so quiet. It's so nice to come out on a night like this and think back on the day. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be intruding on your thoughts this way. Night. As a matter of fact, Mr. Cartwright, I was thinking about you. Oh? Huh? And the young man you hired today. I was wondering why you hired him, knowing he was a coward. Well, I, I don't know he's a coward. But didn't you see him refuse to fight for what was rightfully his? Miss Dawson, I, uh, I hope you don't mind me asking you this, but why does it trouble you so much that I've... I hired this young fellow. Because I know him. You know him? Well, someone like him. Someone I've been trying to blot out of my memory. He, he looked like Mark. And he was a coward like he is. An army officer. Who in the middle of battle. Ran and... Killing himself and six of his men. And that coward was my husband. Now, do you understand, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, yes, I do understand. Miss Dawson, there's something else that I think you might try to understand. And that is that in every man, there's... Uh, some cowardice, and in every man there's some bravery, too. <laughs> you know, when I was a little fellow, someone gave me a little dog, or a mutt, a cute little fellow. And he looked funny, because one side of him, the other side was all black, the other side was all white. And if you looked at him from one side, you'd say, oh, there goes Ben's black dog. And if you looked at him from the other side, you'd say, oh, there goes Ben's white dog. You know what? Inside, he was just plain dog. I don't believe you ever really had a dog like that. Don't you? But thanks for trying. But nothing you can say can make me change my mind about that man. Good night. Everything all right? Yeah, yeah. Fine. I just noticed a lantern burning out there in the barn from my bedroom window. I thought I'd go out and check it. Oh, yeah, some one of the hands must have left it. See you in the morning. Good night, Paul. What are you up to, buddy? Oh, howdy, Hoss. You're supposed to be in a bunkhouse for this time of night. I guess I should have asked, but look at here. I'll be dead for her. Found him in a varmint trap out by the corral. Ain't he a cute little fucker? He's got a busted leg, but I sort of fixed it up. <clears throat> Rascal bit me. I should have warned you. He's He's wild. 
come he don't bite you? Well, folks say I got sort of a way with animals. Yeah, I noticed that today when you was riding that big sorrel. You gonna be all right? Sure. As good as new in a week. Here you go, fella. Well, I've, I've seen some regular professional doctors that didn't have a touch of the animals like you got. It's sort of been my dream, Hoss. Be a veterinarian. Uh, but schooling takes a powerful lot of money. Sure can't save much on what you make chasing wild horses in the hill country. No. Let me ask you something, Mark. How come a young fella like you, with as much compassion and love for the animals you've got, how come you to get tangled up with a fella like Frank Cole, anyhow? Well, I thought you knew. Thinking on it, I guess there's no reason why you should have. Frank wouldn't have told you. Being ashamed of me like he is. Ashamed of you? For what? For not beating a scared horse? A lot more than that, horse. Well, for not living up to what he thinks I ought to be. Hard like he is. He's my brother, horse. <laughs> Howdy, ma'am. I reckon we ain't never been properly introduced. No, we haven't. I'm Mark Cole. Cole? Isn't that the name of the man that owns the black horse? Yes, ma'am. He's my brother. We ain't much alike. Yes, I noticed that. I thought Hop Singh might have some scraps for this little fella. Oh, oh, easy, boy. He's darling, a pet raccoon. Oh, he's been hurt. Easy, ma'am. He's wild. Oh, nonsense. You're soft and gentle, ma'am. Animals know these things. Yes, they do. <laughs> he looked like Chinese Lop of Baron. <laughs> Well, I thought you might have some food for him. If it's all right with Mr. Cartwright. No need ask Mr. Cartwright. Hop Singh in charge of food department. Besides, Mr. Cartwright not here. He and Major Thorson out looking at more horses. <laughs> you come with me. We fix fine meal for a little bandit. <laughs> come. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. for everything you claim, Ben. <laughs> Excellent for army draft horses. Good. Well, that's about it then, Major. Huh? Twenty-six saddle horses, four unbroken yearlings, two foals, and six percherons. That brings a total to. I know what the total is. And Haas, you were wrong. He's not letting me keep my buttons. <laughs> well, as soon as little Joe gets back, we'll drive the horses to Port Baxter for you. Oh, no, somebody ask you what happened to your thumb. Oh, uh, Paul, you wouldn't you wouldn't believe it if I told you. That stallion you're interested in, Major. I'll have him ready to work soon. Real soon. I'm afraid there won't be time, Mr. Cole. My daughter and I are leaving on the noon stage tomorrow. I said real soon. Like uh, tomorrow morning? Oh, wait a minute, Cole. It's impossible. You can't gentle a horse like that overnight. My business is with the Major. Look, if you're ready, I tell you. I've got my methods. Yes, I saw your methods yesterday, Mr. Cole. I don't buy animals with whip marks on them. Then we're in agreement. There won't be a mark on him. In the morning. Well, if you'll join me, Ben, I'll uh, draw up your contract and pay warrant. Brother, yours is sure been on selling that horse, ain't he, Mark? Business ain't been too good. Yeah. Well, he's 
Sure got his work cut out for him if he's figuring on taming that horse by morning. Tame him? It'll tear the heart right out of him. Crush and twist his spirit till there ain't nothing left. But he'll never tame that stallion. He's run free too long. He'll die first. I know. I've worked him. He's just getting to know me. Well, Marker's just some things a fella can't do nothing about. This sorrel's still a mite skittish, Hoss. It might be wise if I gave him some more saddle time. Whatever you like. But it's getting kind of late. See you. What's he doing there? The way I got him fixed, he can't do anything but stand there and quiver. Yeah, but he's not like the others you've been working on. He's, he's sort of, oh, I don't know, he's different. Maybe I ought to give him some water. He gets nothing. He's learning his lesson the hard way, but he asked for it. Now, I told that army brass he'd be ready in the morning, and he'll be ready. A rough way. Check it out. Oh, Frank. <clears throat> Henry. up so he couldn't rest. No water, no food. But mainly, well, he just seems to have lost the will to live. And after having almost killed the animal, your brother brings him back to you to save, is that it? Not quite, ma'am. Frank don't know nothing about it. I stole him. There's a blanket over there, hand it to me. Easy, fella. 
You don't think I should have stolen, huh? Oh, well, that's not for me to judge. Maybe you did right if that's the only way to save him. I ain't sure I can save him. A horse like this is proud, man. The pride he was born with. And run with till my brother caught him. Now, Frank's real good at squeezing pride like that. Only this time he went too far. You and your brother, you're not much alike, are you? And the way you said that... Sounds like you don't see much good in either of us. Maybe it's because I don't see the good in being too hard or too soft. Oh, I think you gentled that word a mite, ma'am. I think you meant coward. Well, you said it. I didn't. But I don't think it's fair of you to bring the horse here where it's likely to cause trouble for Mr. Cartwright. I had no other place to bring him. As for Mr. Cartwright, I'm going to tell him now. No need, Mark. That's your brother's horse. Trust up. No food, no water. Broke his spirit. Easy. Frank was right, wasn't he? You don't need a whip to break a horse fast. It's just plain brutal. Well, Frank, don't look at it that way, Mr. Cartwright. He's rough and brutal, I'll not argue that. But it's the only thing he knows. He feels he's got to be that way to survive. If he's your brother, you can depend on him any way you want to, but there's no defense against treating an animal this way. I hate it as much as you do. Well, can we save him? I'd like to try. But I'll have to keep him here, if you'll allow it. I said we, didn't I? I said, get out of the way. I know he's in there, and I intend to have him. What are you talking about, Frank? You intend to have who? What? If you want me, I'll go. But the horse stays here. You're letting this little horse thief tell you what to do, Cartwright. If you're asking me if I'm agreeing with him, yes. You move that horse out of there, it's as good as murdering him. You've already come close enough to that. He's my property, and I'll decide what to do with him. You lead him out here, I'll forget what you did. Chalk it up to the, the weakness in you. No. A man's got a right to take what's his own, especially when it's been stolen. Now, Frank, Mark here's not denying the horse belongs to you. He's yours. I think what he's asking for is a little more time to bring him around if he can. You're stalling, Ben. The horse ain't that bad off. I want him, and I want him now. I'll buy the horse. What do you want for him? You got him crawling, Frank. What's your price? Nobody buys me off, Ben. He's not for sale anymore. Too much talk. No! No! Now, we'll do this legal. Right down the line, legal. There are laws against them that steals horses, and there's laws against them that harbor horse thieves. Maybe there ought to be laws against them that torture horses, too. That's just an opinion. Your opinion, Cartwright. That's right. Well, I'll be back in the morning with a law that ain't just opinion. I tried with you, boy. I tried to put iron in your backbone, but you're soft, clean through. Now I wash my hands of you.
a lot easier. First a raccoon, and now this horse. Well, Mark's got a real gift in those hands, Paul. A real gift. Yeah. He'll be on his feet by morning. The cart right? Do we have to give him back to my brother? He still needs a lot of care. Well, I... I don't think we have much choice in the matter, Mark. Law's on his side. Maybe he's just bluffing, Paul. Maybe he won't be back. He'll be back. Well, morning's still a long way off. Let's get some sleep. Well, I'll stay here just in case. If you need any help, you know where to find us. Thank you. I was just bringing you some coffee, Hoss. Well, that was a nice thought, Miss Dawson. Thank you anyhow. I'm going uh, to go to bed, I think. Yeah, oh, the horse is going to be all right. Oh, I'm glad. Uh, ben, I think uh, Mark might like some of that coffee. He's, uh, he's staying in the barn. Yeah, it was Mark who brought that horse around. He, he's worked terribly hard. I sure like to drive into town myself. I'm expecting those visitors, as you know. Yes, I know. Dana told me. <laughs> ben, I do hope Frank Hall isn't going to give you too much trouble. No, no. It'll be all right. Well, we still have plenty of time before we have to catch a stage, so I think I'll go see how the horse is this morning. Don't be too long. I won't. Okay, fella. Hmm? Let's go. <laughs> He's better. Yes, ma'am. But not well enough to give back to your brother. No, ma'am. Don't reckon he is. But you'll give him back, and he'll do it all over again, and this time there's nothing you can do to stop it. Look, I'm sorry. It's just that I knew a man like you once. As easy as that, man. Well, maybe you're right about me. But who did you know like Frank Cole? Did you know a man who raised his little brother when their parents died? When he wasn't much more than a kid himself? But how did he do it? By trying to break you like he did this horse? Yes, ma'am, he tried. Because he thought it was best. But he did other things, too. Like one winter in the mountains. We were tracking a wild herd. And it was a blizzard, and my horse fell on me. Broke my leg. Well, any other man would have left me to die. And I wouldn't have faulted him for it. But Frank stayed. He set my leg, gave me his food, and the clothes off his back. Almost died himself. Did you know a man like that, Miss Dawson? I did. He's my brother. I have to go. It's your brother, and he's got the deputy. 
figured it might be. Well, don't go out there. You'll be arrested. You can still run. Well, I thought you didn't like men who run away from trouble. Morning, Ben. Hoss. Good morning, Clem. I don't quite know how to start this, Ben. Why don't you just say it the way it is? I got a warrant sworn out by Frank here for the arrest of one Mark Cole, a charge of stealing a horse. Got another warrant. Claims you aided and abetted in stealing the horse, Ben. Now, is that right? That's exactly right, Clem. And at my trial, I'm gonna ask why a man like Frank Cole there has the right to torture and destroy an animal just because it happens to belong to him. I claim no one no one has that right. And if I have to go to jail to prove it, I'll be happy to do that, too. Where's the horse? Right here, deputy. That the animal? That's him. This ain't a regular case of horse stealing, Frank. You've got your property back. Now, I'll go through with these arrests if you want, but my advice for what it's worth is to not push it. It's up to you. Like you say, Clem, I do have my property back. I'll settle for that. Good. I think I'll ride back before somebody changes his mind. Get the horse. Frank, he's your property. Why don't you come get him? Want him. You've got to go through me to get him. Is this the way you want it? No. It just has to be this way. I'll make it easy for you. Stop it, Mark. What are you trying to prove? You don't know now. You never will. No. Mark, I don't want to hit you anymore. I can't. You're gonna have to, Frank. You're gonna have to keep it down. Go on, finish it. A gentle boy. In time. But it wouldn't be right. So you go on now. Going back to your hills. Go on, fella. Sorry this happened. In a way. And in another way, I'm glad it did. And I think you will be too, when you've had a chance to think about it a bit. All right. Mark, 
you look like a herd of buffalo who used you for a parade ground. Come on, let's get some medicine on you. Dana, we must leave now or we'll miss that stage. Father, couldn't we stay over until tomorrow? You're welcome to stay, Major. You know that. Well, uh, perhaps I could find an official reason for delaying our trip for well, one day. If you need an official reason just to stay over, I got me a bunch of geldings over in the East Range that you've got to see before you leave. Come on. All right, Major. There's your total, and I still say you outsmarted me. Mm, I don't know, Ben. Seems I paid too much for them. Major, you got yourself a wonderful bunch of horses. Isn't that right, Mark? Uh, they're mighty fine horses, sir. There you are, and that's the word of an expert. I'm no expert. Oh, Mark, I think you're entirely too modest. You know animals better than any man I ever saw. Mark, have you ever thought about a career in the Army? I'm afraid I wouldn't be too keen on soldiering, sir. Well, I was suggesting a career as an army veterinarian. The army has a great school in the Presidio in San Francisco. Incidentally, not far from Dana's and my quarters. Wouldn't you like that, Mark? Hey, Mark, this is what you always wanted, buddy. It sure is. Well, then it's all settled. Well, at least now you know what happened to the other thumb. <laughs> 